Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the recap of match day 3 of the Nations League. The general takeaway from it and already for all the playoffs is kind of the national teams are really taking a hit due to the corona break because uh, many games slammed in there and then uh, you know you don't want to go all out and it's always very easy to go defensive. Um, because that's something um, definitely easier to teach to kind of stay uh, tight on the, on the back end instead of having some fluid uh, game forward there. But yeah, it was not necessarily all great watching. Uh, I'll go to the games. I mean, I saw two full and then I saw um, yes uh, yesterday in the evening, I saw the whole um, goal zone on the zone where basically they were switching between the League A and League B uh, games back and forth in search of goals, more or less. So yeah, that was kind of what's happening. I still think internationals are important. Um, it is more fun. I mean, if I, to be honest, if I could choose between, uh, if I would have to choose in my collection, what would I more collect? Uh, national teams or club teams? I probably would go national teams because there's something more fun about them. I may have more club jerseys at the moment, but I enjoy my national team collection a little bit more. And I'm wearing green today for Germany, as we will see who had uh, their maiden win in the Nations League. Sensational, it's an away win. They were wearing the white jersey, but I decided to go this one. Yes, I know it's a fake, but it cost me three euros to get it. So I'm fine with it. It's actually uh, for a fake. It's pretty good. I have to say Saturday, uh, I watched Spain, Switzerland, and it has been a long time that I've regretted to watch a game. I decide I was not sure. I mean, neither of them really uh, either I should go Spain, Switzerland, or Ukraine, Germany. Uh, I asked my wife, she said Spain, Switzerland. Uh, Spain is probably more fun, fun, fun to watch because I told her that Ukraine has so many COVID cases. I probably should, should have watched the other game because they were at least spectators there. Make it a teeny bit more interesting. To had the first chance that should have been a goal. And then five minutes later said, okay, uh, there should, Swiss, Switzerland decided there should be a goal. And uh, Jan Sommer plays a ball out where Ganichaka is slipping right into um, Merino, who just taps it on to Oyasabal, who can put it into the net. And that was the game. There was not much coming from Switzerland. There was not coming much from Spain. Spain having possession for possession's sake, no penetration forward. And what's really uh, galling in, 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 in a way, you had Ansu Fati, and then you take Ansu Fati on, bring Toraware on and yeah nothing changed so they had two or three nice actions against uh, Rodriguez and then clearly uh, then very quickly was put uh, in his place I think Switzerland had one half chance to equalize and Spain had one half chance to do a little bit more it was uh, was not a good game um, and also I mean Germany as I said I'm wearing Germany they played with the first team against the Ukraine and uh, they get with the <laughs> wingers, wingbacks, Kollege uh, Rüdiger to Ginter make it 1-0. Germany controlled most of the game and they just, uh, maybe in the first half, they could have made a second goal. In the second half, they get the goal through Goretzka in a very weird fashion because the goalkeeper, who had sensational saves in the first half, just gets the ball and cannot really control it, falls on Goretzka's head and into the internet. I mean, a really, really blooper goal. And then Germany looked safe until uh, Sula gives away a stupid penalty uh, that Mal Malinowski puts away. And then suddenly the Ukraine was in it again. And uh, Germany had to hang, hang, hang on. And yes, you get the win, it's a dirty win. Uh, not really convincing, but it basically gets you off the schneid. I think in your ninth Nations League game, you finally get a win. I think that was the most important and uh, will probably calm a few of the uh, a few people in within German Germany. But you definitely got to build to something bigger there. Um, 
Luxembourg, Cyprus, Tunil, Montenegro in the first meeting is Azerbaijan, Tunil, we will see in the uh, table. I thought that the Faroe Islands against Latvia, um, that the Faroe Islands, I saw the Halas Schul should have won. I actually saw the first half of Liechtenstein against Gibraltar and Gibraltar took the lead uh, in the 10th minute through the bar. Probably should have added a second. They were a little bit, uh, they were definitely better, but the second half, Liechtenstein came back, hit once the post and had two clear chance chances to make it 1 1. Alas, it was not to be. And Gibraltar gets a pretty big win for them uh, over Liechtenstein. So I need to mention the Minos. Uh, and, and then we had Andorra playing a 0 0 draw against Malta. Let's go to. So and then again I go as I have it here in the list. Croatia, Sweden, um, both goals that were scored, were uh, the first two goals, were both uh, kind of nice attacking movement. The first one th uh, from Croatia in the 32nd. Um, Modric, you know, the Swedes are attacking more. Modric just has a ball, Kerker is forward, I think, goes out to Perisic, who then plays it over to Brekalo, who could take a shot. No, but he plays it back to Vlasic, who could then can pull it in the internet. It was a really well constructed goal. I mean, this is the stuff that uh, you love to see. Croatia, overall, the better team, but in the second half, suddenly Sweden comes back. And did Sweden play in their away jerseys from the World Cup? I thought they had already released their weight jerseys. I found that very, 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 very curious. Anyway, uh, the goal from Marcus Berg was also assisted. The first back could have taken a shot, but puts it back uh, really, again, really nice, nice bit. 1 1, and it seems like it's headed for a draw. But then um, the uh, Swedish defender misjudges a, a, a ball. The ball goes to Perisic, you can play it to Kramaric, and it's 2 1 for Croatia. Who we'll get an important win for them because I think that, uh, if that would have ended in a draw, uh, neither one would have been really happy. And Croatia, you know, put themselves now on the front, front for staying up. Uh, France, Portugal, yes, ended nil nil, but that was a nil nil where you saw there was quality there. Those two teams are well, and both are defensively sound. The nil nil is not an illogical result in this um, um, case. Portugal wanted to come with a lot of physicality in it. France needed to adjust to that. I mean, Giroud played most of the game. I mean, or, or, or in the second, second minute, uh, he got elbowed by Ruben Dias. I think France had overall more of the game. Was the better team I saw, especially in the sack. second half. They had a few nice passes where Griezmann just by an inch missed um, Mbappé. Uh, Pogba, for one reason, also kind of very in the game and very orchestrating stuff. Um, I just couldn't convert a chance that Pepe had a goal disallowed, uh, right, rightly so. It was not the worst game, but again, it ended in a nil nil, which was not illogical. Okay. And it was more or less what I would have expected because Portugal is surely thinking. You know, we have now superior goal difference because we really hammered Croatia, whereas France only got a 4-2. Um, if Portugal wins the two games against Sweden and Croatia, then they only need another draw against France unless France runs riot somewhere. So um, if they want to make the final four, it's relatively straightforward. Win and don't lose against France. And that's exactly the strategy. And I think Portugal will like the chances at home against France, especially under the circumstances we have right right now. I mean, you basically, the first uh, set set of games, I really feel that this was more like we're used to, but now the second set where they're playing three games in a very compressed format, um, I really have the feeling that most national teams, um, you can rip up the page or, or whatever because everything is changing so quickly. I'm really curious to the next round because I could imagine some upsets there as well and a whole lot of nil-nils. Nil-nil also Bosnia-Herzegovina against the Netherlands. The Netherlands on, on the Frank de Boer cannot score any, any, anymore. It seems like losing Ronald Koeman was maybe not the smartest thing out there. Uh, De Frey had a huge chance in the fifth minute and then De Jong very late and that was that. Poland and Italy. Italy is one of those teams that have already an identity and it's a very Dutch Spanish identity but it's a lot of fun to watch. The only thing is they don't have a striker. Maybe they have a striker with Immobile, but you play Belotti. But uh, Immobile, the national team, is not all that, that great. So I would actually, if Lewandowski would have played for Poland, I think Italy might have won the one. Yes, the Poles had chances and probably the really good one at the end through Linetti, who I didn't know was Polish. 
<laughs> you know, I've been watching Torino and Sampdoria where he, he, he was playing, I was always thinking, oh, Lidatis are very interesting. I, had n I did not put that name to Poland, but hey, so be it. Um, Italy, Chiesa had a huge chance. I'm still a little bit miffed that Chiesa didn't go to, go to, go to Milan, but maybe it's for the better. Uh, so yeah, uh, I really thought that Italy had the better of the game had a clear idea and Poland, yeah, um, that's the problem. The, the support for Lewandowski at Bayern is excellent and with Poland it's a little bit missing and he will always be a little bit underperforming. That's how I feel about him. And then the other game that uh, in the league get started so full England against Belgium and the result doesn't tell the story at all. Uh, I think Inge had, had loads of possession, two stars, everything. I didn't see really the first 10, 10 minutes, but I know I got, got there and it says suddenly 72% possession for England. But that was exactly when Belgium actually started to kick, kick in and got a co uh, goal through uh, Carrasco that was not given for offside. I think it was not offside uh, when Meunier got down, but uh, because there was a player in front of the goalkeeper. Which, yeah, hmm, probably all right. But um, if you look at it as a source, I think um, Pickford had a really good view there. A few minutes later, um, Lukaku is brought down by Eric Dyer, who makes a tackle where he never gets to, to, to the ball, and Lukaku trips over him. It was not all the bad foul. But I think it was a penalty foul. And Lukaku makes it 1 0. Um, and Belgium dominated thereafter without creating too many chances. But Belgium really looked like a team. Um, just what De Bruyne can do with his foot uh, finding passes is, is just amazing. I, I love that player. I really do. Um, but then, uh, from a, after a corner kick, suddenly um, Henderson takes a little. Dive, yes, he was held back on the shoulder, but he really, really embellished that one. And I don't want to hear about uh, fair play from England any, any, anymore because he learned that right out of the school um, how to draw a penalty. And I will not um, condemn this. It is part of the game, get an advantage. However, I don't want to hear uh, the English saying that this is only the uh, the Latin people because here, I mean, hand Henders is as British as they come. Rashford, who got this big honor from the Queen, steps up, makes it one one, and I have to say that was a very flattering one one for England at the half. However, I don't know what happened at halftime. I think that. Um, Southgate made some adjustments and let England hang back a whole lot more because they were probably a little bit too proactive. Um, and also Belgium suddenly seemingly didn't take it that serious and anymore. You, I, I was missing from Belgium this punch going forward a little bit. Yeah, let's hold back, let's hold back, let's hold back. And I think just by that it would have ended for a draw which probably everyone would be happy, happy, happy with except the 65th um, mount takes a shot that it takes a wicked deflection from all the world into the net and so it's 2-1 England and Belgium just really kind of flipped the switch I mean there was it was his last uh, actually a wonderful pass by uh, De Bruyne uh, into uh, the attack I think it was Carrasco who, who, who missed it and he comes off and then they cannot find uh, the breakthrough any, anymore. It ends with a flattery 2-1 win for England. I think a draw would have been deserved, uh, given that the second half England was much better in the game. Uh, but I think the win was rather on the flattering side. But I have to say, I enjoyed that game a whole lot more than I did Spain, Swiss, Switzerland, and some other games that we'll talk about in a sec. Uh, Iceland, Denmark. Stupid on goal gives I uh, gives Denmark uh, the lead. Denmark was the better better team, and I think Iceland. I have the feeling that Iceland is a team that uh, because of their great run got into the uh, League A, where at that time they they belong. But right after the World Cup, you could see that every everything is kind of starting to fall apart a little bit, and they come back to the. Um, you know, regressing back to what I mean. I think Iceland is a really good League B team. They're a little bit um, out of sorts in League A. And it showed against Denmark again. 
they just don't have the depth and if there are some uh, in injuries or you know uh, great players retiring it is not meant to be and I think uh, it's hard as it, harsh it is to say extending the Nations League A from 12 to 16 Iceland would have been re relegated I think it would have been not to their disadvantage to be in League B at the moment I think this League A, uh, it's a little bit, I, I really feel for Iceland, it's a little bit too much. They would uh, play better against the next level of opponents where they feel a lot more even. But, you know, it is war, war, but it's, I mean, you get to play England and Belgium, and if they were spectators, this would give you a big uh, cash uh, flow uh, at the gate, but alas, we have the Corona break. Anyway. Right after they have Eriksson, I think it was a throw for Iceland that Eriksson steals and then runs across the pitch. And I mean, Eriksson flying is not something that you see you, you, usually because he's not a player of great, great speed. But he makes it 2-0 uh, and then uh, Skov with his uh, wrong foot, more or less, I think the right rifle. Actually a pretty nice goal to make it 3-0 for Denmark. So this was the League A action from yesterday. League B, Ireland Wales at the really nil-nil draw. Ireland having probably the better chances and probably should have scored a goal. Wales barely hang out. I thought it was also a weird jersey matchup. I mean, I like what Wales was playing, but uh, it was almost hard to differentiate those two. I think Wales could have well played in the red jerseys there. Just my personal opinion. Um, the highlight was McLean's uh, yeah, yellow red, which probably should have been a straight red in the 84th minute. Um, and yeah, there were um, there was a big chance uh, missed by Shane Long uh, that should have been a goal. But other, other than that, it was a rather dreary affair. Finland beats Bulgaria 2-0, didn't see much from that. Norway over Romania. I mean, all the frustration Norway had, they piled onto Romania. And you can see that... Um, if Norway is playing a side uh, at, at the moment against a size, a side that of their uh, size, more, more, more or less, they can be de devastating. Uh, Holland and Sirloth completely destroyed them. Holland makes three. The last one is the pick of the bunch. Uh, two goals from Holland were assisted by Odegaard and one by Sirloth who makes the fourth goal. Um, pretty ir irresistible stuff, but you can also see that there's a clear difference between Serbia on a day where they really, really want to play uh, hard, uh, or as we saw, said, uh, saw Austria early on, who are teams that have a much greater depth in their squad. Uh, that can kind of stop the production line for Norway. But if you like Romania, a young team that likes to play four forward, Norway will hit you big time. Speaking of Austria, another team that had a wonderful first half and like Italy has has actually a pretty clear identity. Uh, high press, forward moving soccer. Had chances to lead 3-0. I mean, just uh, what um, Baumgartner missed. And there was one where he just presses on the defender, goes by him, is free in front of goal and then misplaces it's just by, uh, a bit past the goalpost. And a free header, Hinteregger uh, also, I think, uh, had a good chance that he usually, he, he usually makes. It was actually... Kind of weird that Gregory, after Hinteregger cross for once, uh, makes it very late 1-0. But at that point, Austria should have led by 2-3 goals. And then in the second half, our coach does what he did away to Poland and in many other ways. He's thinking way too small. You have a team that can't go forward, knows each other, knows a very complicated style of play because they, most of them go back to the Red Bull school. And what does our, our coach do? Defensive um substitutions and then space basically tells them hang back now and that's how you let northern ireland back into the game fortunately fortunately the northern ireland squad is too weak to really put pressure but uh late in the game they could have equalized and would not have been deserved although Ur austria would have deserved that one this coach yes we're having decent results but already against romania it was not good and it has been we have been underachieving despite having qualified and i think we will not make we will not make it out of the group stage let's talk about the other games um 
Israel Jack Drake probably having a horrible jersey match, but watch the first goal for Israel. I mean, what a crazy own goal where the goalkeeper just uh, hits over the ball. Horrible. Sco uh, they, uh, the Czechs make a second one and then Sahavi puts a little bit later one back, but uh, the Czechs relatively easily hang on despite having also quite some corona trouble. I think the Czechs are one of the you know, hardest hit teams because already against Scotland they needed to uh, forfeit more or less a game or played with a second string squad. And so Scotland will be a beneficiary and will be another team that if they really get promoted to League A, they will be out of sorts in any regard. Scotland actually gets a 1-0 over Slovakia. Russia-Turkey, game of two halves. In the first half, I think Russia dominated proceedings and got a very deserved goal through Miranchuk, which actually was the first one of all the League A, League B teams on uh, Sunday evening. Uh, but they should have maybe had a few more. One, one, two more. But in the second half, Turkey comes back and gets the equalizer through Karaman and was actually pressing forward. I mean, although the Turk, uh, the uh, Russia also had a pretty good one through Juba, uh, but yeah, it ends in a one-one draw and probably overall on the balance of play deserve it. And then the Serbs do the most Serbian thing ever: uh, cough up a ball uh, that Kanivas can convert to make it 1-0 and then they hit the post, they try going, going forward but cannot get an equalizer or, or, or a win. This is a Serbian team that went, yes, admittedly all out but Hungary, yeah, they didn't have to play that hard, hard against Romania but that's a game that Serbia probably would expect to win. Hungary put themselves in a very good position there. I have seen squad from League C except the two goals from Greece but remarkable results there were most goals sc were scored here we had uh, like 2-2 uh, between Lithuania and Belarus Armenia and Georgia also 2-2 and a crazy 3-3 against no uh, between Estonia and North Macedonia mm -hmm. Greece 2-0 over Moldova and Slovenia ah, I saw that goal too 1-0 uh, over the Kosovo so uh, kind of interesting stuff there too let's look at the standings League A, uh, and also always look at the goal av averages on, on top. I mean, it's very low goal average, uh, which anyway, international soccer has is already less goal scores, but I think this time it really hits hard. Italy, Netherlands, Poland is a very tight group at the moment. Too very uh, many draws. I still think uh, Italy probably the team that is the best here. But again, Italy, Netherlands, and Poland all three want to host the final tournament, and probably who will make it out of there will host the tour tournament. So let's see how that goes. England takes um, and, and and if you see the chances, Italy still is considered the favorite of making it into the top four. Uh, Although how many they have played two away games already have two home home games so that actually gives them a little bit of advantage and we will know a lot more when they play the Netherlands next time and you know if Poland and Bosnia do something yeah I think it's this is an interesting one to watch England takes a surprise lead over Belgium is now a little bit in the driver's seat but it's more or less a toss-up between those, those two. Uh, Denmark and Iceland I don't think are not in conversation making to top top four and Iceland is very much also on to go down and if you just look at the ratings Iceland is just also not very highly rated in that one. Portugal, France, those two will battle it out for the first place but as I said I think Portugal should get a slight 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 advantage there because they have the tactical acumen to dig out the necessary results, which is something I don't necessarily see coming from France. Uh, Croatia and Sweden, yeah, it seems like Croatia will also, and probably seems about right that Croatia will stay in and Sweden will go down. Spain uh, in the driver's seat over Germany, Ukraine and Switzerland. Again, Spain just needs to now avoid defeat to Germany and win the remaining games. I think it's rather straightforward for them. Uh, Group B won Austria thanks to the head-to-head -head over Norway. They won in Nor Norway, so thanks to head-to-head, -head, they are still in first place. Should be a lot more impressive goal difference. Uh, Austria is missing a world-class striker. Uh, that's uh, ob obvious. Uh, if you look, goal average in League B is a little bit higher than in League A already. And as we can see, that this balance match is a very balanced league overall. This is based on the ratings here. Um, I think it's between Austria and Norway who will go up, although Romania could. I think Romania will be more the wrench that will mess uh, someone up there. Um, so let's see how this will go. I have a feeling that despite Austria being clearly the best team in this um, group, that Norway will make it. 
I just have that feeling. Uh, we don't have, we're not well coached enough. In the second group, I think Czech Republic should make it out, but Scotland is having all the advantages at the moment. Um, but I still think that the Czechs, if they can get healthy, uh, will make it out of there. Russia and Hungary looking very good. I still would give Russia uh, the nod. I think they are the stronger. I'm curious whether Serbia will make it out of uh, out of the hole that they dug themselves in. Uh, they are behind Tur Turkey. I think Serbia would be in that group the second most talented team. But as you know, the Serbs, it's always a box of soft surprises. And uh, Wales and Finland cruising in the other group. I, it feels like Bulgaria is doomed to be relegated in that one. Um, Wales and Finland digging it out for top spot. Wales won in Finland. So I would actually assume that um, Wales will make it out of this one. League C, uh, we have a very interesting group in the last one here where everyone has four points. Uh, that is something you you, you really see um, with Kazakhstan and Albania holding a goal difference advantage at the moment. Um, in the first one, Montenegro all but through. I think they need to get one one more win and they are, they are uh, promoted. Uh, Luxembourg all holding on for second place. Uh, North Macedonia and Georgia, yeah, they meet for a uh, spot, spot at the Euros to complete the group with Austria, Netherlands and Ukraine. That's an interesting one right there. Uh, it is, I think, between those two. I don't think that Armenia and Estonia will play a big uh, role there. Greece and Slovenia still head to head. I give Greece the advantage, although uh, they need to beat Slovenia, I guess, to complete that. And then the last one in League D, we have Ferry Islands very much on course still to make it out of uh, League D and go in League C. I think that would would, would, would be deserved in many ways. And then the other one, Gibraltar, looks uh, set. I mean, having a way win at Liechtenstein, who is the strongest opponent, that's a big one. But, you know, we have to see where this will go. That's, it's a long video, but I think uh, since there are many games, it deserves to be. Um, Tuesday, Germany, Switzerland, Ukraine, Spain. I honestly, I don't know what to pick here. Uh, both from what I've seen are not not very exciting. Maybe Germany, Switzerland, I will choose uh, a little bit more, but uh, let's see. Liechtenstein, San Marino. Always take care of the Minos and Ferry Islands, Andorra. And then on Wednesday, we have another really good set of games. We have Croatia against France, World Cup final repeat. Uh, Italy, the Netherlands is a pretty huge one. I think even England, Denmark is a very nice one. Uh, Romania needs to take, uh, or will take on Austria, where the Austrians will want to try to get revenge on Romania. Um, if you look at the second page, uh, Russia, Hungary, that could already be a huge game for Russia. I think if Russia wins that one, they are more or less through in Turkey, Serbia. Yes, this is a must win for Serbia, but also for Turkey in a way. So also interesting. And then Scotland against the Czech Republic. I hope the Czechs can field a good team. And this is the, cha this is the chance for them to right the wrong in a way. But hey, uh, and then, yeah, as I said, Lixi is the one that seems to me Personally, the least interesting one. So yeah, big roundup. I love the Nations League. I don't love how it is at the moment uh, with so many games thrown in together. Too much money in there. And I think we can see the national teams are suffering from that. Also the clubs are, so are suffering because there are so many teams in there. You need to get national team soccer in, but then there are players injured or get COVID infections, which, which is the other thing because, you know, we try to keep them apart. Now we mix them up from all over the world. It's a whole lot, lot of mess. And while many fans will say, yeah, but my, but my club is affected uh, badly, I think the worst affected are the national teams because they need the time to develop. But yeah, let me know what you, you've been watching, what you think about the whole break. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this very long video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Uh, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel because it will keep you updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!